Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And today, of course, is no exception. But don't forget, while you're here, make sure to subscribe, like, and share our content. It means everything to us. Okay, so a lot of people will see someone's glory. What is their glory? Where they are right now, what they're doing. Basically, their highlight reel on Facebook and Instagram. But have you ever wondered, where that got started, how they got to where they are, and what they had to go through to get there. Today, I want to introduce you to somebody who has a real rags to riches story. Y'all say hello to my friend, Chris Brooks. Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. How are you? I am well. How are you? I'm good. I am uh, over here just sunbathing. And, uh... Yes. Yes. Tell everybody where you're at, Chris. I am in the beautiful town of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, ah, on Groundhog Day. There you go. I was going to say, for those of you who all do not know, Punxsutawney Phil is a groundhog, born and raised, if you will, in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. So I'm guessing yes. since you're sunbathing, it's really warm out there today. Oh, that was uh, that was sarcasm. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's like 23 degrees here right now. So in yeah. March. In you're on your spring. own, sir. You're on your own. So... <laughs> Chris, you heard the introduction. We're going to talk a little bit about where you came from to be where you are right now. First of all, y'all, let me tell you something. Chris may look familiar to you because he's been on TV. He's been in commercials and some billboards. So, yeah, a real life celebrity. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you're too kind. <laughs> you're too kind. I'm just a humble servant of the Lord. <laughs> yes. And that I forgot to tell you, and he's super modest. So, Chris, tell everybody where you got started, because I'm going to learn something about you today. I know that you were homeless at one time. Let's yeah. start right there. How did that even happen? You know, um, it was it was a combination of things, you know, uh, literally went from what people would consider the American dream, you know, making had the money. Um and you know had all the things you know all the stuff you know house and just doing just had everything that you could possibly want i was just kind of doing it and and really it was a matter of just not really listening to god and mm -hmm. leaning and depending on income depending on status you know trying to just really fit in with wow. you know just what i thought or looked at as success Right. And somewhere along the lines there, you know, I really just lost track of of what was important, which was, you know, my relationship with God. You know, I was still, you know, I'm a, I was very much active in, 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 in ministry, doing things and just, you know, but my attitude towards, you know, what I was really putting my trust in, mm. you know, if I could just be honest, you know, yeah. I was putting it into things that, that, you know, as however much money I could make, you know, and I was right. really leaning it on that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people though are that way. They, they depend on whatever it is, their money, their education, their name, their guns, their kids, their whatever. And then, like you said, you lose track of what's important. So let me guess, all of that happened overnight, right? Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, <laughs> Yeah, just definitely. I just kind of woke up one day and, and there it all was. No, yeah. it, it, it honestly was, it became, or it was a process of, mm. you know, little things that I was, uh, that I was really just kind of uh, making, you know, excuses for, or just kind mm. of, oh, this would be okay. Oh, I could put off giving or I could put off doing this or, wow. you know, and, and it was just like, well, you know what, I, I need to take care of, I deserve you know, a lot of times we're able to, um, and I know I am, uh, mm. justify just about anything, you know, yeah. and so, oh, yeah. you know, just convincing myself that, oh, you know, I need this or, oh, this will be okay. And before you know it, you start making all of these excuses to where, mm -hmm. you know, you look, you look back at it and you're so far away from where, from where you know that you're supposed to be, yeah. you know, um, mm -hmm. And, and I believe that a, things, yeah, things are first spiritual, right? And then mm -hmm. natural. So, um, mm -hmm. so looking at it, you know, now 
I could also see where spiritually I was just kind of, I had been drifting away yeah. when it comes to uh, just trusting God. Yeah. You know, I like what you said. And I, I think a lot of us get there. We can make excuses. And one of the biggest excuses that we make is I deserve, yeah. I, I, yeah. you know, I, I deserve this. Yeah. I didn't kill anybody today. So I deserve, you know, I didn't yeah. rob a bank. So I deserve. Yeah. I'm, and, and I'm working hard. Right. I'm going to work every day. It's, this is yeah. an honest job. I'm making honest money, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I deserve. Wow. So when you became homeless, where where were you staying at the time? So, so literally, uh, the, and it's, it's something because, you know, the whole drifting piece mm -hmm. was over a period of time, but the homelessness literally happened within a 24 hour period. So, oh, wow. you know, going into work and my whole department was just roped off where they had, you know, the, the work it went overseas mm. um, and, you know, people were crying back, boxing up their belongings. Um, and because I was making a certain amount of money, I was living a lifestyle of, of having and not putting away, not saving, sure. not being smart, just, you know, being young and just, you know, mm -hmm not being wise and so mm -hmm. uh, went went home the things there uh with my you know things just kind of went completely uh <laughs> uh chaotic and mm -hmm. ended up losing my place ended up just sleeping in my car um wow. stayed in my car for a little bit but then the car threw a rod and so it wouldn't even run wow. um, Somebody gave me a, a room to stay in that uh, mm -hmm. literally I had to wrap myself up because rats, I mean, you can hear the rats running oh my uh, on the table and, you know, running across the bed. So uh, mm. I just ended up on the street and oh, thankfully Christ. there was this uh, mom and pop shop, uh, soul food spot that mm -hmm. they would uh, fix me a little bag, you know, of mm -hmm. uh, food, whatever they're going to throw away that night. Yeah. You know, um, and that's what I would eat. I would just stay there because it was just too dangerous to have, you know, good food sitting around, you know, and yeah. around others that are in the same situation. But yeah. I found myself where, uh, and then, you know, bank accounts were drained. Uh, I was just, you know, connected with just the wrong, you know, wrong person. But yeah, um, so there wasn't even access, you know, at that point, mm -hmm. everything that I had, that I've been working and doing was just gone. And yeah. um and it was like God literally stripped it away in yeah. uh, in a twenty four hour period. So, How long were you out on the street? Uh, this was it's funny enough. It still took me a few months to finally mm -hmm. just give in. It <laughs> just like really kind of hit rock bottom, and wow. and I literally was on the verge of uh, taking my life. Sure. Um, and uh, and just as I was about to to act on it. Uh, mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you know, Holy Spirit just put this worship song, you know, in my mind uh, and in my heart. And I just yeah. kept hearing it. It was like he turned the, turned the volume up on it, you know. It yeah. just started like ringing in my mind. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for yeah. he's worthy, Mercy, he's worthy yes. for he is oh, wow. good, for he is good. And, oh, wow. and at that point, I, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit just led me to call my brother or call my brother's house. My mm. sister-in-law answered the phone. She was like, we've been praying for you. I don't know what's going on or mm. what you're doing right now, but get to a Greyhound bus station. I'm buying you a ticket home. Come home. And I didn't argue. I didn't complain. I just said, yeah. okay. And mm. I walked. And I walked and walked. And yeah. finally got there. And by the time I got there, she had a ticket waiting on me. Wow. My gosh, yeah. that is so crazy. So yeah. you're out on the street. You would literally lost everything that you had worked for. Your relationships had gone sour so fast. You are eating what people will give you. God, yeah. through Holy Spirit, says, I am good. I am so good. Yeah. Make yeah. a phone call. You get a bus ticket. So your last walk of 347 miles, whatever, to the right. bus station was the turnaround. So now you're on a bus going to your brother and your sister-in-law's house. What are you thinking at this time? You know, um, it literally was like a prodigal son experience, right? Because mm. I just didn't feel, even at the time when I was about to take my life, I didn't feel worthy or feel like, you know, there was any value to my mm. life. 
Uh, and so when he, when when he put that song in my heart about how good God is, it was like, regardless of the choices that I had made and found myself in this situation, you know, his goodness is still there, his yeah. forgiveness, his restoration. And that, so even on the that. bus, it was just like God had been just working on my heart, you mm -hmm. know, uh, of just, you know, repentance and just, just figuring out what was I going to say to my family to explain, you know, the way I smelled, the way I look, you know, it was just yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. And, uh, and it wasn't even about that, you know, for them, it was just happy that I was home, you know, my, yeah. my parents and, and my family, my, you know, I really got reconnected with my family because I've become, I really, and I had done it. I really had estranged mm -hmm. myself from them. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, and so the way they just embraced me and it was like, the next day after getting there, you know, I got, mm -hmm. I got a job, you know, yeah. got reconnected with my church and, and it just seemed like God just had me on this fast track of recovery. Yeah. And well, that's like a blessing. as fast as, I, as, as things have fallen, mm -hmm. it was even faster the way that he had recovered, that he was recovering. Me. Yeah. Uh, that is such a beautiful story. So let's skip ahead a little bit. So then you meet this beautiful girl. Uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. then, so then, what had happened? So what had happened was, <laughs> um, yeah, she actually hired me <laughs> for finals <laughs> week. I was uh, doing massages, and she, I just finished school, and and I start my massage practice. I was doing all these things right, and she hired me uh, mm -hmm. for finals week, and that's how we first met. And so wow. it's like we, as I tell people, we met with her giving me a job. So <laughs> hey. And, uh, Hey. Uh, you know, hey, I wasn't <laughs> mad. I wasn't complaining at all. But uh, she actually thought that I was younger than her. And she was like, I don't date younger men. You know, so I went through the whole thing of right. proving to her that I was older than her, actually. Wow, um, that's so funny. But we just, but yeah, we uh, we started dating. And and just the more that we spent time together, it was just uh, really clear that uh, that she was who God had strategically placed for me. Yeah. You know, um, and the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there was just so many instances where, you know, as I was, you know, in that process of recovering and just mm -hmm. things were happening and I was just worried that anytime we would have an argument, that meant it was going to be over, you sure. know, she mm -hmm. was upset about something that meant it was going to be over, you know, and so mm -hmm. she really was patient with, uh, as God was taking me through that healing process, yeah. realizing that, that um, all relationships don't have to end with some mm -hmm. big blow up and you just end up you know yeah back on the street you know and so yeah uh, she really enhanced and uh enhanced my life thank mm -hmm. god just uh you know i i truly did find favor that uh, is awesome i and i mean I, I i love the story because a lot of people that know you have maybe heard that you were homeless at one time but have never really heard the story of of it in and of itself, and then you coming out of it. So now in the introduction, I said, folks had seen you on TV. Let's talk about that a little bit, my friend. Give me a rundown of your your resume, if you will. What have you been on? Oh, you know, just, uh, <laughs> I'm so humble. That, yeah, you know, just try, to, try to pull it together, sir, if you don't mind. Okay. And sing. Uh, no, so, uh, so I've done some, uh, some theater. Uh, uh, local theater stuff, but then mm -hmm. uh, here as a recent, I've done some things for ABC uh, and Fox with uh, the Cleaning Lady, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Big Sky. I have a show coming out on uh, on Showtime with uh, with some very some A list uh, actors. That um, it's called the uh, called the Curse, and uh, so that's a pretty cool one. Um, I also have an uh, independent film that just won some uh, big awards during a, uh, the Santa Fe Independent Film Festival uh, mm -hmm. this uh, over the past couple of months. So that was cool. We also uh, been able to do some work with Kelsey Grammer, with um, uh, Dolph Lundgren, and mm -hmm. uh, quite a few others. So uh, Wanted Man is another one that I, another film I did that's, that will be coming out. Uh, that's the one I did with Kelsey Grammer. So mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, that is and so amazing modeling and stuff so yeah 
That is, I just think that is absolutely incredible. And it's so inspiring though, too, because Chris, you like me, you know, a lot of people who, who, who may be in that, that down state right now. So if you were talking to somebody who is in the place where you were then from where you are right now, what would you say to that person? That, uh, you know, my mom always told me that where there's life, there's hope. So if you're still breathing and if your situation has a change, it's not over because, you know, the Bible says that all things work together for good to them who love God and are the called according to his purpose. So if your situation isn't good yet, it's not over yet. It's not over until it's good. And yeah. trust me, if you just uh, continue to trust God, continue to, you know, just hold on to the fact that, that we serve a good God, then your situation, though it may be bad right now, it's not going to stay that way. Oh, wow. That is so that is so wonderful. And I'm sure anybody listening to this in that position really appreciates that and needs to hear that. So, Chris, if somebody wanted to continue a conversation with you, where could they reach you? Yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, they can always email me uh, at uh, chris.brooks at tcconline.tv. Uh, that's probably the easiest way. Uh, they can find me on social media, uh, Facebook at Christopher Brooks, um, Instagram, uh, Mr. Brooks. And then, uh, yeah, so just any social media site, uh, okay. any, you know, and then the email, that's always uh, an easy one as well. Sounds good. Don't worry, you all. If you didn't get that information, all of his contact information will be down in the description below. And don't forget, while you're here, like and subscribe and share this channel with your network. Now, if you or someone you know has an inspiring story, a topic we absolutely have to talk about, or a small business that needs to be highlighted, go over to our website at faithonfriday.com and send us an email. We want to hear from you. Chris, my friend. Before I let you go, <laughs> yes, yes, we got to play our game. Okay, I'm ready. All right. So the game is called This or That. It's pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things, and you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? Okay. Yes. Let's do this. Plants or flowers? Plants. Hotel or tent? Oh, hotel. <laughs> we just talked about that. I'm so sorry. That was so bad, but whatever. Oh, that's, you just triggered me. No. I know. I apologize. <laughs> Water park or amusement park? Amusement park. Mm. Practical joker or I don't play like that? You know me, Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I am so sad. It's so incredibly sad. <laughs> Candlelight or moonlight? Ooh, moonlight. Okay. Planner or make it up as you go? Make it up as you go. I know Please that's do. right. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the best fun you'll never be able to tell somebody about. Oh, I like tell it. You. <laughs> go all day or I need a nap? Go all day. Okay. When you're talking, is it pecan or pecan? Oh, it's, I love butter pecan, so pecan. Okay. When you meet someone, what's the first thing you notice, their eyes or their smile? Um, Their smile. Okay. And are you a words of affirmation person or are you more of an acts of service kind of guy? Oh, I think words of affirmation is mm. more. Thing. More you. Uh, I, I could have told you that. But anyway, so... Yeah. <laughs> you who you are right now, what would you tell your 13-year-old self? Don't worry. Um, there's going to be this uh, LASIK eye surgery. So the big glasses that you wore that's too big for your face, they eventually will go away. Um, your skin will clear up. And <laughs> unfortunately, the height you are right now is what you're going to be stuck with but God still loves you. And there's a beautiful woman that will love you. There's people around the world that are going to appreciate your, your insight and you're going to inspire a lot of people. 
<laughs> wow. And some that young man feel five, six and a half. So don't even worry about it. Wow. That young man is going to be all right, y'all. He's going to make it. Chris, thank you so much for joining us and telling us your story. I really appreciate you. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. You are the best, 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 best. I, I'm, I'm so proud of you and happy for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And you all, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time on Faith on Friday Presents. Thank you.